All right, welcome to Right On with John Crane. And I just got in the mail a uh, grab bag of stuff that I bought on eBay. And it's a grab bag of uh, wheels and handles and vice handles and all kinds of cool stuff that uh, I think are just so cool for uh, different projects and different things that I'm doing here in the shop. And uh, so that spurred a few projects. And uh, one of the projects I'm gonna be working on today is making a quill feed handle. It's kind of a crank wheel handle uh, for the Bridgeport mill. So uh, today's job, uh, I'll be working on the Bridgeport mill and I'll be working over on the LeBlanc lathe. So uh, yeah, join me for this project here and uh, we'll dive right in. All right, let's take a look here and see what we got. All right, here's this uh, grab bag of stuff here that I got off of eBay. And, uh, you know, sometimes you buy a, a, a lot of tools on eBay, you know, where there's someone selling a whole bunch of stuff together. And uh, sometimes you never know what you're getting. And uh, I just love getting those packages in the mail. But check out all this stuff. This is great. These are all kinds of uh, old machine and vice handles and that type of thing. Uh, check out this one here. This is a, a Bridgeport knee handle there. It's got one tooth uh, cracked off there, but nonetheless, uh, that's a great little handle there. And uh, there's a whole variety of little uh, square socket, uh, you know, tools here. Looks like a bunch of uh, square drive, uh, you know, drives here for uh, chuck keys, you know, for three jaw chucks, four jaw chucks, that type of thing. And just some random like knobs. Somebody had this advertised as like uh, steampunk or something like that. But uh, check out this uh, handle here. Another nice little square drive. And uh, this almost looks like a homemade job right here. That's a big beefy handle with looks like adjustable length on that there but yeah a lot of these just look like uh nice vice handles and i just love the character of all these old things uh you don't see people making many things like this anymore and uh these are just great here's a uh this came in here this is a jacobs number five and uh looks like somebody put a a long handle on there and uh but pretty cool that fits uh my big uh chuck here this is a number 20 jacobs chuck here for the lay that i got but that fits on there you know this handle might be a little too long there but that's always nice to have another chuck key for that and uh you know just all kinds of little random odds and ends here but uh what I was after in this lot, I was hoping there'd be a little handle, and this might be the one here that would fit. Uh, this is my grandfather's uh, old brown and sharp uh, milling vise here, and the handle's been missing for a while. This vise, I've known this vise since I was uh, knee high there. This has always been uh, in the family shop there, and. Uh, so this little handle, it's a little bit loose, but by that fits, and I think that's just gonna be great. I'm happy to have a handle back on this. I've been using a, just a wrench for that for a long time now. So, but look at that. I just love the character of uh, these little, uh, you know, vice wrenches here. Uh, another thing I was after, was a little uh, hand wheel and uh, a couple came in this uh, set of stuff here and uh, this one right here uh, is awesome and I'll show you why right now. All right, I'm over here at the Bridgeport Mill and what I've been missing on this machine right here, there's uh, supposed to be a feed wheel right here to feed the quill down, you know, and you can, uh, you know, of course feed this with the hand lever here, but you can get this nice precise control with the feed wheel that goes here. Now I know a lot of people don't use this wheel on here, but I've never had it on this machine and it would be great to, to have it, to have that fine tuned movement. So when I saw uh, this 
a uh, little hand wheel come in that package there that I just got off of eBay. I brought it over here and boy, the fit on this is just exact right on there. And uh, that's just awesome. But what it looks like, what I need to do is there's a hole right here. And if I zoom in there, see there's a, a little hole right here and there's supposed to be a pin coming out of the back of the hand well here that will fit up with that. And that can engage that and then you can uh, move this and feed the quill down. So it looks like I'm going to have to put that pin in there. And then I'm also going to have to drill this out and make a little handle to put on here. Right. And uh, this also looks a little bit too thick uh, in this dimension right here, a little bit too long. So I'm going to have to bring this over to the lathe and I'm going to take some of this off. Right. And uh, trim that down. So you can uh, engage the feed right here on this little knob there. So that's going to be uh, the project here for today. So I'm going to start, I think, by uh, trying to find a little bit, uh, a little transfer punch right here that will fit in here. And I can put a mark on the back of this so I can drill into here and put a pin in there. Uh, so I have a few steps today here on the bridge port and on the lathe. So I'm going to get busy on that. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this back here. So this little post right here, that sticks out about one and a sixteenth out. So I'm gonna trim this thickness down right here and uh, take a little bit off the face of this on the lathe here and bring this down to uh, one and a sixteenth. So that fits flush with the face of that right there. And then, uh, can operate this knob like it's supposed to be. All right, I got this set up here on the LeBlond in the four jaw chuck there. And I was just dialing this in here. And it looks like I got this running here uh, within a thousand there. So that's pretty good. And uh, the calculations that I made on this, I'm gonna have to take off uh, 550 thousands to get this uh, face down here. All right, I got this set up here in the multi-fix tool post. And uh, the tool holder I got here is a DCKNR, and I'm running a uh, CNMG insert here. So I'm just gonna uh, drop this in, and I'm just gonna come in and touch off and then set up on my uh, travel dial here and take off 550 thousands. <laughs> All right, so I'm just touching off right there, and I'm going to set zero right here on the travel dial. Right there, and then I'm going to come in and take off 550. review here just looking at this I'm liking how this face looks uh, right here but I did only took off uh, 300 thousandths off of this here so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit and then I'm gonna flip it over and take the remaining uh, 250 thou off of the back side of this
All right, I got this all set up, flipped around, and I'm gonna come in here and touch off and take off another uh, 250. <laughs> And I'm going to come in, take off uh, 50 thousands here. cut into where there was an old uh, set screw in there, but that's not gonna affect what I'm doing there uh, for the bridge port. So, because I'm just gonna have a pin sticking out of here and uh, I think that's just fine. It's got a nice uh, face on the outside there. And then uh, I'll just put a little chamfer here on the edge and clean up this burr. <laughs> All right, I'm back over here at the bridge port, and what I need to do is this little hole right here, I need to make a small transfer punch. So I just uh, dug through some uh, stock there and I found a little 964ths pin there. And so what I'm gonna do is cut that down, put a little tip on it, and turn that into uh, a little transfer punch there so I can get a mark on the back of that hand wheel. All right, I'm over here at the old Walker Turner and uh, I got the pin up here in the chuck. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, cut this off with the grinding wheel while this is spinning in the chuck and see if I can grind a little point on it too. I might come in with a different wheel to do that. All right, now I just got a, uh, a little Dremel uh, here with a little small grinding wheel in there. I'm gonna come in with that to uh, bring that down to a nice point. All right, here's this little uh, transfer punch that I made there, and it looks like a uh, tip came out pretty good. So I'm gonna go put that in uh, over at the bridge port. All right, let's pop this guy in right there, and it's a nice snug fit, which I like. All right, on the back of the wheel here now, I'm just gonna come in with a little uh, sharpum here. All right, now I got the uh, Sharpum on the wheel here, and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna slide this on, right? And then I'm just gonna move this back and forth right here and just put a little scribe line on the back side of that, right? And there I go, I got a, a nice little line there and I can uh, drill that out. And I think what I'm going to do is I have uh, an eighth inch roll pin that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna drill a eighth inch hole into this and then uh, drop in that roll pin into there. And then that will insert into this 964ths hole. So it doesn't have to be an exact fit into that hole real tight. I can have a little bit of play in there so it's just easy to pop on there and find the hole. All right, I'm just over here at the bridge port and I got the wheel here in the vise and uh, I got an eighth inch uh, milling bit in here, right, to drill the hole. And uh, I'm just gonna uh, come in, touch off, and then I'm gonna raise the table uh, 375 thousandths there. And uh, I need that pin to be at a depth of uh, three eighths. So, uh, I'm gonna turn the machine on here and touch off. All right, now I'll set the, uh, the dial here. All right, now I'm gonna go real slow here and raise this up. Right, there's 375. I'm 
just going to clean a little of the sharp I'm off of here. All right, I'm going to take this little uh, roll pin here and just hold it with the needle nose and uh, give this a little tap right in there. All right, that looks great. All right, it's got that set in there. All right, let's see how this fits here. Ah, nice, just perfect. All right, up next on the docket there is, uh, I gotta drill this out and put a little handle on here. So I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do for that. I think it's just gonna be a fixed handle on there. Maybe I'm gonna uh, drill this, tap this out, and have the handle just screw uh, right into that. All right, just looking through that uh, package of stuff that I got there from eBay with the handles, and this happened to be in there. And uh, I thought this might be a nice handle to put on here, right? The uh, only thing this is a little bit too long. I'd like to cut this down maybe to about here or so. So I'm thinking I could put that on the lathe, uh, part this off, and maybe try to round this corner off here. And then uh, looking at these threads here, uh, put the thread gauge on there, and that's looking like it's a, a, a 3 8 16 there. So I can uh, drill and tap that out accordingly, and then uh, stick this handle on there. All right, I got this uh, set up here in the LeBlanc, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with uh, the parting tool here, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna part this all the way off. I'm just gonna come in partially, and then I'm gonna bring the parting tool in on the compound there and take a little chamfer off of that edge there. All right, so what I'm gonna do right here on the Travidile, I got this set to zero, I got the compound set to zero, and I'm gonna use the parting tool to come in on an angle and just start taking a little chamfer off the back edge of that handle. took that over there to the sander and uh, just cleaned up the end of here and gave it a little uh, Scout Crafter polish there. Uh, I'm actually sure he could probably get a, uh, a nicer sheen out of it. Boy, he really gets a nice uh, satin sheen going on some of those tools there. So this is looking great. That's a nice size uh, handle right here. And now I'm gonna uh, go over and drill and tap this out on the bridge port. All right, I'm just uh, setting this up in the vise here. 
and uh, I got this little pin sticking out on the bottom there. So I got the uh, old plate of uh, my grandfather's there, F.W. Crane. And I'm gonna poke the pin through one of these holes so it has a nice uh, flat spot to sit. And then uh, clamp this guy up right here in the vise and uh, get that good and tight. All right, I'm just coming in with this center bit. All right, I'm going 3 8 16 on the tap there, so I'm coming in with a 5 16 inch drill bit there. I just bought this new tap follower here uh, from Greyledge CNC, uh, made in the USA there, and this is uh, going to be my first time using this particular tap follower here, and uh, looks good, looks like nice quality. All right, I got the 3816 and uh, my nice Starrett tap handle here. I'm just going to give a couple of little shots of rapid tap here. You know, I know we're in some cast iron, but... Uh, it's nice just to give it a little shot there. So this should tap nice and smooth. Yeah, that's cut no problem. And this tap follower seems to be working just great. And I'll lower that down a little bit there. Yeah, cutting like butter there. All right, and I can let off of this tap follower here. That's uh, that's in there real nice now. All right, let's try this guy out. Ah, oh, threads in there, really nice. And that's nice. That's got the little swivel handle there. I wasn't even uh, going to go for that kind of swivel handle there, but uh, that worked out perfect having that in that lot of stuff that I just got off of eBay there. So I think I'm going to put that in there with a little bit of Loctite to hold that in there. But uh, before I do that, I think I'm going to clean this up on the wire wheel there and uh, just get some of this rust off of this wheel and get it looking nice. All right, now I'm just gonna put a, uh, a few drops here of the blue uh, thread locker on these threads here. So I'll just give a little drizzle of the old syrup there and then uh, drive this guy in. And just give that a little cinch up. Right, look at that. All right, let's go put it on the bridge port. All right, cool. We'll slide this uh, right on the bridge port here. All right, that's looking sweet. And uh, yeah, this is great. If you wanna use this hand wheel, what you gotta do is over here on this side of the bridge port here, you gotta disengage uh, the quill feed right here. And then make sure that this lever is moved over to the left, right? And then that engages uh, the quill feed there for the handle. All right. Always a little pork and bean sauce here for drilling some holes. So I'll just run a little of that on the bit. But yeah, we can uh, start this up here. And then check this out. You can use this for feeding the drill bit down or cutter or whatever have you. And you got a real fine control. Yeah, that's really smooth. Look at that. 
mean, you have such fine control with that wheel right there. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking that a lot. You know, I haven't really uh, used that much. I used it in a shop long, long time ago, you know, 20 years ago or so. And, but I haven't used uh, this wheel since then. And uh, it's just nice to be able to access all the features of this machine and to have this wheel on there. And I just think that's great. And uh, I love the look of it too. That's really cool looking. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that project there. And uh, I am always a, a happy camper here when I'm in my shop and I'm working away. I just love uh, being in here working. And uh, another place I love being is out in the whole rainforest. So I live out in Washington State and I've spent a, a great deal of time hiking and traveling uh, out in the whole rainforest there. So I'm gonna leave you guys today with some footage uh, uh, from out along the whole river there.